Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So according to the Portuguese media, Bruno Fernandes has lost faith in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and he wants Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out of the football club. Now Bruno Fernandes recently had a bust up with Solskjaer regarding the tactics he used in the 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. He also was upset with Solskjaer that he was taken off at half-time in the game against Tottenham. Bruno Fernandes is also infuriated with the board over the lack of signings. Bruno Fernandes's camp have denied that he had a bust-up with Solskjaer. By the way, Bruno Fernandes will miss four games for Manchester United because Cristiano Ronaldo recently got tested positive for COVID-19. So Bruno Fernandes will have to quarantine for 14 days. I think it also said that Paul Pogba and Anthony Martial may have to quarantine. Now, Bruno Fernandes has been at Manchester United now for almost a year. We got him back in January from Sporting Lisbon. I think we got him in a deal worth like £55 million. Bruno Fernandes won some at Busby Player of the Year, didn't he? Don't forget. And I think he's won Premier League Player of the Month around three times. And I think he's scored around, is it, 14 goals for Manchester United. A lot of his goals have come from the penalty spot. But I think Bruno Fernandes has made a difference in the team. And he's the best signing Solskjaer's made. And I think he's one of the best signings we've made since Alex Ferguson's retirement. So that's the breaking news on him. <laughs> now, I want to delve into some news on Paul Pogba. So, our dressing room are still backing Paul Pogba, despite Paul Pogba's recent admission. Paul Pogba said his dream is to play for Real Madrid one day. So, basically, he wants to join Real Madrid. Now, Paul Pogba said uh, last year that he wanted to leave Manchester United because he was seeking for a new challenge. And he was talking a lot about Real Madrid and Zinedine Zidane. Now, Real Madrid have confirmed that Paul Pogba is not their top target. I think Real Madrid prefer to get Eduardo Camavinga over Paul Pogba. Keelan Mbappe is also on Real Madrid's agenda. But there again, you know, we've been interested in Eduardo Camavinga. You know, we're seeing him as a replacement for Paul Pogba. It's also recently said that uh, Barcelona are interested in signing Paul Pogba next summer when his current contract expires with Manchester United. Uh, there's obviously no be narratives of Paul Pogba possibly going back to Juventus. Pogba did endure four good years with Juventus. The vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison to his ones at Juventus. You know, this is Paul Popper's fifth season at Manchester United since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016. He's had a very, very poor start to this season. <laughs> I think he's had a couple of good periods at Manchester United. He did well towards the end of last season. His combination with Bruno Fernandes was very, very good. And he did well in that three-month period when Solskjaer was the interim manager. Pogba sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player. Uh, for the vast majority of last season, didn't really have a perception on him because he was out with that ankle injury. There has been no talks over getting Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the club. Pogba's agent, Mineraliola, said before this season kicked off that Paul Pogba wants to stay at Man United and he will hold talks over a new contract. I think it said a few weeks before the end of last season that Paul Pob was close to signing a five-year contract with Manchester United. 
But um, at the turn of the year, we was very critical of his agent, Mini Raliola. Main explanation is because he publicly criticised Solskjaer and Manchester United, didn't he? Pod has got just under a year left on his current contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. As it stands at the moment, he is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. Definitely overpaid for him. He has made over 100 appearances for us in all competitions since he rejoined. And he's won two trophies at the club, and that was the Europa League and the League Cup. Pogba also endured a very difficult time under the Jose Mourinho era, but so too did all our top players. We had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. You know, so that's the breaking news on him. Now, I want to delve into some news on Sergio Romero. Now, I was reading reports yesterday and it says that Sergio Romero wants to be released from his contract immediately. So he wants to leave Manchester United and I think he wants to make a move to the MLS. Everton failed to sign Sergio Romero on deadline day. He did mention that Everton were willing to pay him around £100,000 a week. Aston Villa have also been in for Romero. Leeds have been in for him before. <laughs> uh, Romero's been at Manchester United now for a good five years or so. Got him back in 2015 from San Pandora on a free transfer. And he's always been our backup goalkeeper. Romero's made around 61 appearances for the club in all competitions. The vast majority of his appearances have come in the FA Cup, the Europa League and the EFL Cup. And I think he's got just under a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Don't forget, several Man United players were upset with Solskjaer over the treatment of Sergio Romero. You know, uh, Romero hasn't played internationally since 2018. I think we're demanding around £10 million for him. So that's the latest news on Sergio Romero. Now, let me just delve into some news on Mauricio Pochettino. So, according to recent reports, Mauricio Pochettino would favour a move to Manchester United over Manchester City. Now, Pochettino is the favourite to take over at Manchester United to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, it did say the other week that we was in contact with Mauricio Pochettino's representatives. Don't forget Mauricio Pochettino was linked with a managerial role at Manchester United before Solskjaer got the job permanently in March last year. If we do appoint Pochettino win, he will be our fifth permanent manager since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Pochettino has been managerless now for around a year. He was sacked from Tottenham last year and I think from my own perception Tottenham made a bad mistake by getting rid of him. Potticino did endure five and a half years with Tottenham. Analysing the vast majority of his tenure, Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four. Last year he guided Tottenham to their first ever Champions League final. And he must have spent over £200 million pounds in the five and a half years that he was at Tottenham. Before he was at Tottenham, he was at Southampton. Um, he only enjoyed their short tenure with Southampton. But, you know, he did guide Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League era. And before Southampton, he was at Espanyol. So, so far, he's managed three clubs in his managerial career. Two of them clubs have obviously been English clubs. But I think Pochettino is a better manager than Solskjaer because, like I've said, Pochettino is well proven in the Premier League. He's dealt with top players. He's got a good philosophy. My only reservation about him is that he's not won anything in terms of silverware as Mauricio Pochettino. Uh, he's also been linked with a managerial role at Real Madrid before. Uh, Newcastle at one point were in for him. So there you go. But yeah, um, I do think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to get sat 
as Manchester United manager. I don't want it to happen because, like I said, I adore Solskjaer a lot. You know, he's a club legend. He was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance. But I just think as a manager, he isn't good enough to succeed because he hasn't got that proven pedigree, has he? You know, Manchester United is the third club in his managerial career. Obviously, you know, before he was with us, he was at Mould. Won a few Norwegian titles with Mould. And before he was at Mould, he was at Cardiff. He enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. The main explanation why he was sat from Cardiff is because he ended up getting Cardiff relegated. You know, Solskjaer has been at Manchester United now for almost two years. This includes the three months when of it, this includes the three months when he was the interim manager. You know, we did appoint him in, in December 2018. And he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. And obviously, you know, this season is his second full season at the football club. And we've enjoyed a very, very bad start to the season. And this is why the pressure is mounting up on Solskjaer even more. Obviously, we lost our opening game against Crystal Palace by three goals to one. That was our worst defeat on an opening day of a Premier League season in 25 years. And we recently lost to Tottenham by six goals to one. That was our worst defeat since Alec, the Alex Ferguson era. And the first time we'd lost 6-1 since we lost to Man City 6-1 back in 2011, which was nine years or so ago now. And to be honest with you, we was lucky to beat Brighton um, in the second league game. You know, we're beating them by three goals to two. But in reality, it should have ended 2-2. Two, two. I think the best game we've enjoyed so far this season was the 3-2 win against Brighton in the Carabao Cup. But um, yeah, we are sitting, what, 16th in the Premier League? And we are near the relegation zone. And I've already said to you what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to do to avoid getting sacked as Manchester United manager. And I think his, his decision making has got to improve because in a lot of games at Manchester United, he's been very tactically naive. Uh, obviously, no results have got to get better. Uh, certain players have still got to step up to the plate. You know, this is, you know, what must happen. It'll only cost Man United around £4 million to sack Solskjaer. That's totally contrast to the £18 million that were paid to get rid of Jose Mourinho. Obviously, Solskjaer is still under contract with the club until 2022, so I think he's got just under two years left on his current contract at Manchester United. You know, you know last season was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at the football club, and I give credit to Solskjaer you know, for what he did last season. You know, because he did exceed most of his expectations. You know, he obviously got his qualification for the Champions League. And I did say how important Champions League was for our players, attracting players, and for the financial structure. And we also finished third. And Solskjaer also guided us to three semi-finals. That was the FA Cup semi-final, the Europa League semi-final and the EFL Cup semi-final. But don't forget the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season and at that point Solskjaer was very close to getting sat as Manchester United manager. I think there's other positives you can take from his tenure. You know, there's not all negativity, you know, regarding Solskjaer's career as a manager at Man United. You know, I think he's... Uh, made some good signings. Um, he's obviously spent over £200 million since he became Manchester United manager. You know, in the summer of 2019, he brought Daniel James in, Anne Wambasaka and Harry Maguire. In January, he brought Bruno Fernandes in. He also brought Odina Gallo on loan. And in the summer transfer window of this year, he brought Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Facundo Palistri, 
And he also brought Ahmad Traore in, but Ahmad Traore will be joining the football club in January. Solskjaer's also brought quite a few academy players in to the football club. I also like the way that Solskjaer has promoted the youth uh, because the young players have been given their opportunities. Since Solskjaer took over the reins at Man United, you know, he's had a habit of developing of developing young homegrown talents, hasn't he? Uh, to be fair, last season, uh, my record against the top six sides was very, very good, you know, because last season, Solskjaer beat Pep Guardiola three times. He also beat Frank Lampard three times. He's already beaten Jose Mourinho once. And we've had some good periods under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer area, you know. Was it the second part of last season? We went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions. You know, we also did well in that three-month period when he was the interim manager, you know. And I said, you know, pl uh, players have improved under him. Uh, we've also seen a lot of players leave since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in to the football club. Uh, we've obviously, you know, seen the likes of Smalling leave. He went to Roma, you know, we let Delo go out on loan to AC Milan. Andres Pereira, he went on a one-season loan with Lazio. Uh, to Heath Chon, he went out on loan to Word of Bremen. Dylan Levitt, he went out on loan to Charlton. You know, Sanchez, he joined into Milan permanently. We made the right decision by getting rid of Sanchez because Sanchez enjoyed the difficult 18 months with us. And plus, his wages were having a really bad effect on the club. Um, Angel Gomez, he also left the football club. You know, Fellaini, he left in January 2019. He, I think he was the first player to leave under the Solskjaer era. Um, obviously, you know, Young, he left back in January after he enjoyed eight and a half years at Man United. He went to Inter Milan. Damien, he left the football club, was it, in the summer of 2019. Uh, Valencia, he left the club in the summer of 2019 after he enjoyed 10 years with Manchester United. Um, Herrera and Lukaku, they left in the summer of 2019. I think Herrera and Lukaku are two players who should have kept because they was very, very good. For Manchester United, and so don't, and you know we are still in the process of trying to offload more players. Um, obviously the players we are looking to offload is Jesse Lingard. Uh, we're obviously looking to offload Marcus Rojo, Phil Jones. Uh, like I said, Romero's open to leaving the club. I think uh, next year we will offload Daniel James. Uh, Solskjaer said towards the end of the summer transfer window that he was prepared to sell Daniel James for around £25 million. You know, Leeds United are the ones that have been interested in Daniel James. You know what I mean? So there you go. But like I've said, some of the blame stems from Solskjaer for the inconsistency, obviously. Uh, like I said, some players have got to take responsibility, but I think the vast majority of the blame stems from the board. Because quite clearly, you know, Woodward and the Glazers and that have not backed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough. I don't think that I don't think any of our managers since for the Ferguson era have been backed enough. You know, Moyes weren't backed enough, Van Gaal weren't backed enough, Mourinho weren't backed enough, and now obviously Solskjaer is not being backed enough. And Solskjaer reeled quite a few times throughout the course of that summer transfer window that he was uh, very infuriated with the board. You know, our recruitment policy has been gashed for several years. You know, don't forget we've also overpaid for players. You know, Woodward's been at the football club since 2012. The Glazers have been at the football club since 2005. Uh, Matt Judge... We also got to say he's accountable for some of the failure of transfers. Uh, Matt Judge has been at the club now a good seven years or so. But like I've said to you, I think the biggest culprits are the Glazers. Because the Glazers are the ones that recommended Woodward in and they also recommended Matt Judge in. Now Solskjaer did recently say that you know we are still in search for the director of football. I'd like Manchester United to get a director of football in um, because that's one of the structural changes that we need at the football club. And if we had to get a director of football in, we need someone who knows the club inside out and someone who's obviously got that experience. So we've been in the process of trying to get a director of football in since the um, Jose Mourinho era and Woodward has said quite a few times he'd like a director of football to come in at Man United. 
Now, before, there was a few of former Manchester United players linked with that role, weren't there? You know, there was talks of Ever coming, there was talks of Ferdinand coming, there was talks of Edwin van der Sar coming, there was talks of Darren Fletcher coming. Um, at one point, Paul Mitchell, who was linked was linked with that director's role. I think Fabio Paratici from Juventus, he's also been linked with that director's role. You know what I mean? But like I've said to you before, you can have the best manager in the world. You know, if you're not, if the manager's not getting back enough, then obviously they're not going to succeed. Um, I think Manchester United have definitely made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years or so, and that's one of the main explanations why we've been so inconsistent. Uh, we've obviously, you know, brought a lot of players in in the last seven years and they haven't been the right calibre players for Manchester United. We've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. I think there's some players we've given contracts to who we shouldn't have given contracts to. I think we made a bad mistake by giving the uh, giving Solskjaer the job permanently, but the main explanation we're giving the job permanently was reflecting on what I did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager. And obviously Ferguson made one mistake, and that was obviously no point in David Moyes in. But prior to that, Ferguson didn't make any other mistake. Some Man United fans think we made a mistake by getting rid of Jose Mourinho, you know. So, yeah, Man United have made quite a few mistakes, haven't they? But I said to you, didn't I, before the start of this season, what would represent a good season for Man United? And that would be a top four finish, maybe a top two or top three finish, and win a tr and winning a trophy. I think it's very imperative that Man United win a trophy because we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Solskjaer era. And we haven't won a trophy for over three years. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, you know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won it now for seven years or so. We are the most successful team in Premier League history because we have won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League titles, you know. But, you know, in the last seven years, you know, we've obviously had different managers with different philosophies, you know. The managers we've sat since Ferguson was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. Um, under the Van Ale, we won the FA Cup and under the Mourinho era, we won the Europa League and the League Cup. And the Community Shield, if you also want to put that into the equation, I think we also got second in Jose Mourinho's first season at Manchester United. And we spent close to the billion pound range on players in the last seven years. I think we've probably got around four or five good players in our team. At least, you know, I think Marcus Rashford, he's very, very good for us. I think Mason Greenwood, he's very, very good for us. Anthony Martial's good, but Martial's had a bit of a shaky start to the season. Uh, Paul Scholes was recently talking about Martial, saying that he almost conned Manchester United and that, and Paul Scholes still believes that Man United need a world-class number nine. I think Bruno Fernandes is very, very good. You know, Donny van der Beek's very, very good. Um, I think Brandon Williams is good. I wonder what's going to be happening now with Brandon Williams following the arrival of Alex Tellez, to be honest with you. Uh, but like I've said to you, there's, there's players at Manchester United that are good enough and there's players that have had bad starts to this season. You know, De Gea, don't think he's good enough now for Man United. Um, Solskjaer shouldn't keep him as number one you know I think Solskjaer should put uh, Dean Henderson as number one because like I've said Dean Henderson has now got that experience behind him you know De Gea has conceded 11 goals in his last three games totally contrast to Dean Henderson because Dean Henderson hasn't conceded any in his last two games he's been involved in uh, Anwan Misaka he's had a poor start to the season uh, Maguire, he's had a poor start to the season. I think Solskjaer needs to take the captaincy off Maguire and give it to Bruno Fernandes because Bruno Fernandes is the one that shows fantastic leadership in the team. Uh, Lindelof, I don't think he's good enough to represent Man United. There's a possibility, a chance we could sell Lindelof next year. That's if we get a centre half in. I think uh, Luke Shaw, he's enjoyed a pretty poor start to the season. Uh, Pogba, he's enjoyed an abysmal start to the season. And Fred McTomway and Matic, I don't think they've had uh, good starts to the season either. You know what I mean? So definitely players have got to take responsibility. Uh, Manchester United play Newcastle on Saturday. It is at St James's Park. 
Got to get back to winning ways, obviously. As you all know, Edison Cavani is not available for the game. Due to uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So he won't be making his debut for the club. Um, Anthony Martial is unavailable because Martial suspended for three games. Because obviously, you know, he got sent off in our 6 1 defeat to Tottenham. So that's a bad blow for Man United. Now, Pogba could be unavailable because he may have to self isolate, like I mentioned. Uh, I presume, though, that Alex Telez will be making his debut for the football club on Saturday. He will. So, yeah. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.